Tim McMahon. James, uh, I'm sure you're aware of Mike D'Antoni's contract is up now. Uh, what has the experience of playing with him been like for you, and, and what are you hoping happens uh, with the head coach for your organization? Uh, this experience has been great. You know, moving me to, to, to point guard, primarily the ball handler, and uh, you know, just coming up with different schemes and basically changing the game. Um, it's been an unbelievable experience. Um, you know, it's been a tough season for us. Obviously, it didn't, it didn't end like we wanted it to. Um, you know, so just uh, just got to figure it out. Mark Berman. Mark Berman. We'll go with Kelly Eco. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, Tracy? My ear. Yes. Go ahead. We'll go with Kelly Eco. Hey James, overall, the can last... you hear me? James, Mark, over, over hold the... on. Oh, <laughs> gotta figure it out. Go ahead, Kelly. All right. Hey, James, over the last four years, how would you assess your growth as a leader and as a person in this organization? Uh, I've gotten better, you know, in all aspects. Uh, still got a long way to go, but you know, there's always a room for improvement. And uh, as I just keep listening and learning and just you know, taking it step by step, uh, whether it's uh, season season by season, you learn different experiences, you learn things, and just kind of continue to get better, continue to grow. And hopefully at the end of your career, uh, you, know, you become an, an exceptional, obviously, basketball player and leader. So, um, like I said, we got a, long, got a long way to go, but I'm in the right direction. Brian Smith. James, since you've been with this team, I mean, you guys have come very close before. You've talked so many times about getting to that next level. Um, how how frustrating is it to, to finish in the second round this year and just know that, you know, every year you guys have been close but you haven't been able to get to the finals or, or get that championship that you want so badly? Uh, it's very, very frustrating, you know, especially the amount of work that individually I put in, um, you know, but I gotta, I'm gonna keep chipping away and keep keep going and keep going until I can't go anymore, you know? And uh, feel like we're, we're a piece away and, you know, we just gotta keep keep trying to figure it out, keep trying to grow and, and put the right pieces around uh, me and Russ to, to, to get to where we wanna go. Dan Wilkie. This is something that this is extra possible, but when you look at kind of you and Russ, how do you feel like that worked out this year? Like you just mentioned, obviously, you guys need a piece of it. What kind of piece of it does happen? Well, we got to you know, look at our entire team and see you know, what direction we want to go. Uh, you know, obviously, we had towards the end of the or half the season, you know, we tried to small ball, you know, uh, the work you know, for the most part. Um, so we just got to take an overall look at our team and assess our team and you know, see um, what, what holes that we need to fill um, and go from there. You know, then each individual player that we have on the roster now just continue to get better, continue to learn from things that we that we made mistakes on uh, in this postseason and just continue to you know, be ready for, for the next one. Adam Spolin. Hold on, Tracy. Sorry, there's a pretty novel approach that you guys decided to better and what you saw, did you see enough to think that it could work? Yeah, yeah. And even in a bubble, I think before these last few games, we were number one in defense. You know, so it was a small things like the, the, the rebounding. You know, we're small. We can't rely on a bigger guy to rebound the basketball for us. We have to you know, take on the challenge. As the shot goes up, we find a guy and box out. And we just weren't, weren't you know, disciplined enough. Uh, throughout you know times like in, in, in games and that's how the Lakers went on runs uh, and it's kind of deflating when you get stops, you get three or four stops and they get offensive rebounds and they get putbacks so uh, they, they make you pay the three, three point shot so um, it's just small details like that so if we're gonna play small ball we gotta get you know make sure our defensive rebound is on point things like that so um, yeah. Adam Spolin. With that being said, would you like to see Mike return next season? Of course, of course. Mike has done some unbelievable things here, uh, you know. So you know, it hasn't ended yet. Mark Medina. 
Hey, James, follow up on your point about the need to have uh, the right pieces around you and Russ uh, and look at what the holes are. What, what do you think are the holes that need to be filled? Uh, we'll, we'll go back and assess and figure it out as a group. Kim Davis. Hey, James, um, I know that the game and the season just ended, but did you like the direction um, and just the – the, the cohesiveness of the team. I know you have to go back and look at everything, but are you feeling good about the direction, the way you guys are headed? Yeah. We're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. Headed in the right direction. Terrence Harris. Hey, do you, do you think, is there a difference between playing small ball in the, in the regular season and postseason? And, and is there some way that you guys could perhaps, you know, maybe tweak some things? To, to make it, you know, to make it work in the playoffs as well? Because it seemed like it was a little different in the playoffs. Nah, it wasn't. It was just, it was us. You know, it was us. We never really, get, other than the game one, we never really gave ourselves a chance. You know, I feel like if we would have did the things that we were, that we, we, we talked about and watched film on, and we went over <laughs> and walked through this, if we would have did those things at a high level, like we've been doing previously, and giving ourselves a chance, then, you know, if they beat us, then that's, you know, we got to live with it. But I feel like we never really gave ourselves a chance. And that's talking about rebounding. That's talking about our switching. That's talking about um, offensively, our movement, and things that we're trying to um, attack on the offensive end that we never really got to consistently. Um, and so that's that's on us, you know. And if we're giving ourselves a chance and they beat us, then it's, yeah, we, need to, we might need to, you know, you know switch it up or, or adjust something or tweak something. But, um, yeah, we never really, we never really gave ourselves a chance you know, all the time. We'll take two more, Adam Wexler. Uh, James, how disappointing was it the situation with Daniel House? And how much did that affect you guys over the last couple of days and these last couple of games? We were very disappointing, and it affected us. You know, obviously we still have to go out there and play a basketball game, and play a series, but it affected us because you know, obviously, you know, just the distraction and he was a huge you know, part of our rotation. Uh, but, you know, we still have to go out there and, and try to get games, try to win games. Um, Last one, Kevin O'Connor. James, early on in Houston when and when you were with OKC, you were one of the league's best and most dynamic scorers off ball using screens, handoffs, cutting. I'm curious, in addition to your elite play with the ball in the future, is playing off ball an area of your offense you'd like to see revived? Yeah, okay. Okay. Any position that a coach wants me to do, I'm able to do it. I can go do it, um, or I can learn how to do it. I'm at the point in my career where I haven't, there's nothing I haven't really seen, or I'm not really able to do. Uh, you know, and if I'm not good, good or great at it, then I can work on it and, and, and try to be, be great at it. So, um, to answer your question, yes, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, especially to win. Thank you, James.